Hey, you guys. I'm wishing we could be together today for a discussion instead of just a video about this little deal I want to talk to you about. If, if it was a discussion kind of situation, you could ask questions and I could get my point across better to you. And it's just a reasoning kind of a situation I want, I want to do with you this morning. And sometimes, sometimes if we have answers to some of our questions, uh, we can understand sometimes the things that go on in life a little bit better. And so the question that I want to, I want to discuss with you this morning, and just discuss it a little bit, is uh, why, why did God put us here? Now, I know this is one of those big questions like, where did we come from? What are we going? What are we doing here? Man, 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 whatever. This is a little bit different than that. The reason that God put us here, why did, why did, he, why did he choose you and me? And why, why did he choose us to be created, to be on this planet? Why? 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 What was the purpose? Well, there's a lot of, of ideas about it, but I think we can come up with some good, uh, good answers by looking at a few things in Scripture. And that's what I want to do for just a minute this morning. Um, there's several things that I can tell you that the Scripture says about why God put us here. And they, they, they go from Isaiah to Genesis to Ephesians to, to Revelation, all, all through the Scripture. It talks some, it gives us hints about why we're here. Uh, it says, I'm going to put you there for my glory. This is for my glory, he says. And uh, we're, he said, we're going, to, we're going to make you guys in our image. He's going to be... You know, that's in our image. And this is a, a kind of an interesting one. In Ephesians, it talk, he says this. He says, I'm going to put you here so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might be, known, might be made known to rulers and authorities in heavenly places. Whoa. Well, that sounds like a whole discussion on its own, doesn't it? Um, we're put here for, so that he, in, um, in Titus, he says this, he said, for my own possession, for a, for a people who would be zealous for good works. Well, that's, that's the reason we're here. That's, 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 a, that's another reason we're, but why did, why did he have, need to go there? Why did he, why? Uh, what was the reasoning behind the very beginning? And I think that we can, we can come to the conclusion in a couple of places. Uh, one place is in Revelation, Revelation 4, verse 11, where he talks about, having this, uh, uh, that he, we, we can exist um, and it would be for his own pleasure. And the bottom line is God put us here for his own pleasure in the way we would glorify him, the way we would live with him, the way we, everything else. But he put us here to, to, so that it was for his good pleasure. Now this word pleasure uh, is not just uh, pleasure, like I get a kick out of watching football, or you know, whatever. It's a, it's more of a sensation. It's, it's a fulfilling sensation. So God put us here for, uh, for kind of a fulfilling sensation. Well, that just lead, that just leads to more questions, doesn't it? Well, why did why why is it that way? Why is he not just well? So as we as we look about the scriptures about why God put us here, it comes down to to four basic. And I'm talking very basic ideas. And it's to know him, to love him, to live with him, and to glorify him. That's, that's, the, that's the reason. And if we go back a little bit about why he had to have these things, why he had to, had to have this, why he had to do it, I think we can really uh, look at the characters of God for the answer. And one of the main characters of God is that God is love. Now we've been taught that all, all through all through our life. God is love. And it's really interesting that love cannot be fulfilled or come to a maturity without an object. And that sounded funny, didn't it? Oh, I just love my dog. <laughs> well, if you didn't have a dog, you wouldn't have anything to love. Well, I just love my family. Well, if you didn't have a family. Uh, you wouldn't have anything to love. So God says, I love you people. I, I am love. And because God's nature is to love, there has to be an object for that love. And he chose us to be that object to possess his love. Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting. And then we have to ask, you know, why did he put us on earth? Why couldn't he just, you know, create us in heaven and we just do the same thing there? Well, that's interesting also. 
Uh, you know, when, when, the, when the Israelites were, were headed out in the wilderness and they were griping about no food, and God says, okay, I'm going to give you some, some cereal to eat, some, some manna. And you guys know, and we've talked about it, this word manna means, what is it? They would come out and there's cornflakes or honey cakes or whatever they were all over the ground. They said, what is this stuff? They called it manna. And God says, here's what you're going to do. You're going to pick it up eight day, or six days. But on Friday, you're not going to pick it up. I mean, you're going to pick up enough for Saturday because I don't want you picking it up on Saturday. That's the Sabbath. So you pick it up. And if you keep anything overnight, it's going to turn to worm. I mean, it's not turn to, but the worms are going to get it and uh, it's going to spoil. But on Friday, you pick up more than you need so that you'll have it on Saturday. And it's really interesting. He says this about it. He says, I'm going to tell them this, and I'm going to make this rule, this law, to see if they're going to do what I want them to do. Well, didn't he know what they were? Yeah, he, he knew. But sometimes it's not just the knowing, it's proving out for the, uh, other people and, for, and uh, for, for situations. And here's what I mean. If we have a covenant, and I say, hey, if you'll do this, I'll do that. Okay, good. And all of a sudden I say, hey, you broke, the, you broke your cov the covenant. No, I didn't. I did that. I did that. No, you didn't do that because I said we'd do this and do this. And you, you didn't do that. Oh, but see, there's a quarrel going on, isn't there? We, we kind of try to justify ourselves. So sometimes there's, there's a, a tests that God puts us through for a record of what, uh, how we handle it. And so and, and it talks about that in the scripture where it talks about... Uh, that we're going to be judged by the things that we do, whether they're good or whether they're bad. So we're not going to be able to argue about it because when, when the time comes, they say, here's what you did. No, I, I, that's not the way it was. Well, it's recorded right here. So he recorded about the Israelites, about the, the laws of the manna. So there'd be a record. And, and as we see in later, later there, it says that some of them did. They tested it to see if it was actually true. So, so he puts us here on earth to kind of not to prove ourselves as much as it is to have a record of who we are. So when that end time comes, he'll know, and, 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 we'll, and we'll know, or I'll know, uh, what my life was. So it kind of has a long way around to say this, that God needed an needed a object for his love, and so he decided to create mankind, put him here on earth, so that he could live his life, you know, through his heart, and uh, according to God's will, and there would be a record of to, 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 to verify, if you will, his reward later in life. Now, that's, that's going a long way to uh, kind of a roundabout way to say a few things. And, but you ask me, why is that important? Why, you know, the reason I'm here, why, so why? 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 You know, why? Well, I think the reason is so that God could have a companion. He could have a, a uh, relationship with us, and that's what he wants. And so that should be our desire also to reciprocate that love to him and have a relationship with him. Okay, now, why couldn't he just make us all um, robots so we couldn't, we couldn't go do wrong? And that way we'd hear, be here and we'd worship him and everything would be cut and dry and we wouldn't have to make these decisions and go through these tests. Well, how would you like to have a, uh, uh, a girlfriend or a boyfriend who uh, did nice things for you because they had to. <laughs> no, women always have this problem. And I'm not picking on women, don't get me wrong. But when you give them something for like Mother's Day, if you have to because it's Mother's Day, it doesn't mean as much to them. But if you give it to them because you love them and you're trying to show that love, then they appreciate it more and it means more to them. And God's the same way. He said, if you do what I ask you to do, that's going to that's gonna go a lot toward our relationship. And, uh, the, and your rewards finally. So he could have done it a lot of different ways. And like we talked about last week, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts higher than our thoughts. We can't question a lot of that stuff, but we can kind of reason it together. Now, here's the reason that I think that this is important for us, because we know that God has all this power and all this authority to do these things. Now, some Christians, and I'm, I'm sorry to say, some Christians, they, they look at like the, the, the Genesis and God created the earth, you know, and everything in it in, in six days and rested the seventh. And some Christians are going as far as to say, hey, um, he, he could have used evolution, you know, to do each day 
So, you know, so evolution could be right. So, and we kind of try to appease those that are against uh, creation. And we say, yeah, it could have been, he could have, he could have done, yeah, he could have done it that way. Yeah. So then the question is, well, you know, why did he create days and the day cycles at the beginning if it wasn't going to be a day? And another interesting thing I thought was the third day, he created grass and shrubs and trees and all that lower plant vegetation, stuff like that. And then on day four, he created the sun. Well, how are those plants going to live a thousand years without without the sun? Well, I think God could have could have made them live you know, a thousand years uh, without the sun. Um, well, I think God could have made them in a day too. So, yeah. You know, now here's the whole thing: <clears throat> if we're if we have a license, if we create in ourselves a license to question Genesis in the very very beginning of the Scripture, then it gives us the right. It gives us the license to question things all the way through. Uh, the scripture and that's not that's not acceptable there are no questions as far as what the law is and what what uh the his character is about wanting us to be um, have a relationship with him so when you when you go through your life and you start thinking about uh why things have to be a certain way and uh i hope you can reflect on this and know that you are here for the purpose of god's glory for his pleasure. <clears throat> and I'm hoping that you bring pleasure to him. Now he talks about his creation. He says, you know, even the fish in the ocean, fish in the, I think the stream is what he talks about in Proverbs. The fish in stream, the stars in the sky, they all praise God. They all give glory to God because they do what they've been created to do. The sun comes up, sun goes down, the stars come out and shine. The, the, whole, the whole cycle of our, our, our uh, outer space and our solar system, the whole shooting match. They glorify God because they do what he has designed them to do. Even the fish in the brook, they're doing what God designed them to do. And that's why he put us here, is to glorify him in that he, we, we should do what he's designed us to do. And that's to have a relationship with him, a loving and caring and a genuine relationship with him. So I, th I hope that, that this, just this one little short thought can help you throughout this next week when you have troubles in life and you question things, why things happen, why things go on the way they do sometimes. Well, why are you here? What, what, what's, your, what's, your, what's your purpose? What's, what's God's purpose for putting you here? Well, it's so that he will have a partner. He will have a relationship. He will have a community of people who return to him the love that he shared with us. So I hope that helps a little bit. I hope it might, I hope it wasn't as more confusing than, than it should have been. And, but if you have any questions about it, you know, you drop me a line and see if I can't explain it a little bit better. Um, but anyway, take care of yourselves and I hope to see you guys real soon. But anyway, like I always say, behave yourselves.